Assalamu alaikum wa So we started harvesting our first early potatoes and tonight's a night for chips so we're going to get in and harvest the rest of our first earlies. So let's get at them. Is that this one? So this variety that we're pulling today, these are, these are first, these are ju Red Duke of York and they're a first early variety. Oh, there's nothing on that one. Let's see where we get. Oh, here we go. There's some coming now. So we've been we've been having a little fertile around these and pulling out potatoes as we as and when we need them. But uh, oh, here we go. There's some more. There's some nice I ones. Daddy broke my cupboard glass. Broke cupboard glass. These Duke of York. I'm really impressed with these this year. I don't normally um, do well with earlies, but these Duke of York have done really well. My cupboard broke. So here we go. So on that side of the bed, they're all my main crop. So I'm not going to pull them up. I'm just going to move them back over. I'm just going to finish off these last of these earlies on this side. Here's another plant here. Let's see what we get inside this one. This one should be a bit more promising. So that's not bad so far from one plant. Let's get inside here and see what we can find. We've had a bit of a bit of a disaster this year with the, with the potatoes. Um, I made the mistake, and and I tell everyone, be careful of where you get your material from, and. There we go, some nice ones there. And so I've got some um, grass delivered from my tree surgeon. And there must have been remnants of weed killer in there because my the broad beans that I planted have been completely decimated. They, they've got the classic... Um, symptoms from broadleaf broadleaf herbicide poisoning I'll show you what what's happened to them So that's not bad for two plants for a couple of um, Duke of York. What we've been doing in this bed is we've been putting our hands in and feeling around for what we, we can find and taking out. A couple of days ago we, we'd fertled around in there and we'd pulled out a similar amount of these potatoes. So that's not bad for what's left of our first earlies. What I'm going to do with this soil on top is I'm going to use it to mulch another bed. 
and then I'm going to use this area under under this arch to plant my spinach and there you go Lo loads and loads of peas I've got hanging down from my peas uh, so lots and lots of beautiful peas I'll show you what's happened to my broad beans that I planted amongst my potatoes and classic symptoms of amino pyrilid I think that's how you pronounce it anyway but yeah it's a broad broadleaf herbicide and I'd, what I'd done was I'd got loads of fresh grass clippings and I used those grass clippings to mulch the top of this potato bed and there must have been some um, f herbicide left in, in that grass because all these broad beans have completely been you know, they've all ended up like this not a single plant has made it out of about 20 plants in here they've all ended up like this what else happened was I used some of that grass to mulch my potatoes in pots if you look at these potatoes in these buckets what I did was I mulched the top of these potatoes with that same contaminated grass and it's ended up stunting the plants in here so that's one of the things that you've really got to be careful of with compost from unknown sources and when you've got raw material from unknown sources I mean I warned people about it and I made that mistake myself and now I'm paying the price because my broad beans are completely gone and these potatoes I'm not gonna I'm not holding out much hope for these because look, just look at the state of them um, so let's see what happens maybe we get some decent weather and they turn around but I was re I'm really upset with how these have turned out um, but that's one of the things about when when people are using these kind of broadleaf fertilizers non-stop uh, broad when people are using these broadleaf put herbicides and these pesticides you don't realize or they don't seem to care about the damage that they have to the environment and further down the food chain because look that grass has ended up contaminating my beds if that had gone off to compost that kind of herbicide remains in the compost and it continues to damage plants and, and uh, crops further down the food chain they have started to control how these kind of herbicides are used but they're still getting into people's gardens, they're still getting into places and until uh, they completely ban this kind of stuff we're going to continue to get these uh, problems so be vigilant, be, do be vigilant I mean I've made the mistake and now I'm paying the price so hopefully you'll learn from my mistake and not repeat it I'm hoping my main crop potatoes aren't affected as badly by those herbicides and pesticides so um, we'll just we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, hopefully, the amount of rain that we've recently had has done us some good and washed some of it out. But all I can imagine is washing it out somewhere else. It's one of those things. Um, you live and you learn. Yeah. So just be careful about where where you get your material from when you mulch in and when you compost in, because this can happen and it's happened to me. What I will do is I'll give these a few weeks, see how they how they turn out. Um, when, I, when I pull them and I'll get some more potatoes planted in these pots so these are the potatoes that we've pulled from those couple of uh, Red Duke of Yorks they're alright, I'm happy with them we're going to get inside, we're going to chip these up and I'm going to leave it there for this one Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi